Today, we're diving into the fascinating world of HTTP. It's the backbone of the web. We'll explore how it evolved from HTTP 1 to 2 and then to 3. Get ready for an interesting ride. HTTP stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol. It's how browsers talk to web servers. They ask for web pages and get them back. At first, HTTP was for hypertext documents. These are documents with links to other documents. But developers soon found HTTP could send images and videos too. Now it's also used for APIs, file transfers, and a wide range of web-based services. Let's go back to 1996. That's when HTTP 1 was introduced. But before that, there was HTTP 0.9. It was simple. It only supported GET and had no headers. It only sent HTML files. There were no HTTP headers or status codes. HTTP 1.0 added headers, status codes, and new methods like POST and HEAD. It was straightforward. The browser would ask for a web page, the server would send it. Each request needed its own connection. This means a lot of back and forth. It wasn't very efficient. Here's why. First, there's the TCP handshake. It's a three-way process to start a connection. Then for HTTPS, there's a TLS handshake for security. This all happens before any data is sent. With HTTP 1, this happened for every resource, every image, CSS file, or JavaScript file. Not ideal, right? In 1997, HTTP 1.1 came out. It fixed problems with HTTP 1. It's still used a lot today, even after 25 years. Why? It has some great new features. HTTP 1.1 introduced persistent connections. The connections stay open unless told to close. This meant no more closing after every request. No more multiple TCP handshakes. It got rid of the extra work of constantly opening and closing connections. It also introduced pipelining. This lets clients send multiple requests over one TCP connection. They didn't have to wait for responses. For example, when a browser needs two images, it can request them one after the other. This made things faster. It reduced the wait time for each response. Another key feature was chunked transfer encoding. Servers could send responses in smaller chunks. They didn't have to wait for the whole response to be ready. This made initial page rendering faster. It improved user experience, especially for large or dynamic content. HTTP 1.1 also brought better caching and conditional requests. It added headers like cache control and e-tag. These help manage cached content and reduce unnecessary data transfers. Conditional requests using headers like if modified since let clients request resources only if they changed. This saved bandwidth and improved performance. But websites grew bigger and more complex. This showed a big problem with HTTP 1.1, head line blocking. If the first request in the pipeline was delayed, all the others had to wait. Because of this and other issues, many browsers didn't use pipelining. Developers found ways around these limits. One was domain sharding. Websites would serve static assets from subdomains. Each new subdomain got six more connections. Another trick was to make fewer requests by bundling assets. Images would be combined using sprites. CSS and JavaScript files would be concatenated. In 2015, HTTP2 arrived. It was designed to fix HTTP1's performance problems. It brought major improvements. HTTP2 introduced a binary framing layer. Unlike HTTP1's plain text messages, HTTP2 uses binary format. Messages are divided into smaller units called frames. These are sent over the TCP connection. The binary framing layer handles all this. HTTP2 also brought full request and response multiplexing. Clients and servers can break down HTTP messages into independent frames. These can be mixed during transmission and put back together on the other side. This fixed the head line blocking problem from HTTP1. Stream prioritization was another key HTTP2 feature. The order of loading assets matters for web pages. Stream prioritization lets developers set the importance of requests. The browser can tell the server which assets are high priority. The server then sends more frames for these important requests. HTTP2 also supports server push. HTTP2 allows multiple responses to clients' requests. A server can send extra resources along with the requested HTML page. It's like giving the client a resource before they even ask for it. Lastly, HTTP2 introduced header compression. In HTTP1, only the main data was compressed. Headers were sent as plain text. 
HTTP2 uses HPAC to make headers smaller. HPAC compresses headers and remembers past headers. It uses this info to compress future headers even more. But as web apps got more complex and mobile internet became common, HTTP2 shows some limits. TCP's nature is handling of packet loss and head line blocking caused lower page loads. This was especially true on high latency or lossy networks. This led to HTTP3 standardized in 2022. HTTP3 used Quake instead of TCP. Quake was developed by Google. It was built on UDP, a connectionless protocol. UDP doesn't need to set up a connection before sending data. Quake and HTTP3 have some big advantages. They reduce latency. They improve multiplexing without TCP head outline blocking. They handle packet loss better. They perform better on mobile networks with seamless connection changes. When a client connects to a server with HTTP3, it starts a quick handshake. Quick combines with TCP 1.3 for security. The TLS handshake happens during the quick connection setup. This reduces overall latency. HTTP3 sets up connections faster than TCP. If the client and server have talked before, Quick can secure the connection in one round trip. Sometimes it can do it in zero round trips. In zero RTT, the client sends a request right away. The server processes it without a full handshake. HTTP3 also handles network changes well. If you switch from Wi Fi to cellular on your phone, HTTP3 can keep the connection going. This is thanks to Quake's connection IDs. These don't depend on IP addresses. As of 2023, HTTP 1.1 is still widely used, especially for simple websites. HTTP 2 has been adopted a lot. It handles over 60% of web requests, according to some estimates. HTTP 3 is still new but gaining ground. Big companies like Google and Cloudflare are leading its adoption. That's a journey through HTTP's evolution. We've seen how it changed from HTTP 1's simple model to HTTP 2's multiplexing and HTTP 3's quick connections. The web's foundational protocols have adapted to our growing need for fast, reliable online experiences. If you enjoy our videos, you will love our system design newsletter. We cover topics and trends in large-scale system design. Join 1 million subscribers from the tech industry. Subscribe at blog.bytebygo.com